Hey everyone, welcome back to DCF Garage. And this is me and Gorgeous White's 2003 E320. This is a W211 uh, generation. If you haven't seen the video where we did a reveal and uh, showed you everything that was wrong with it, I'll leave a link here in the card. But this is a card that we just got. It has a lot of things that are broken. Some are simple. And today what we're going to do, we're going to fix the simple stuff. So me and Gorgeous Wife, we took a trip to the junkyard and we got a few things. So we got the sun visors that are bad in the car. And this is out of a, a C-Class. It was, I think, a C240. It's not really an E-Class, but it's the same format. And I think that the vinyl is a little bit better than the cloth that's in there because it's not going to get as dirty. And this one is really, really nice. It, it's in perfect condition that we got. It was really cheap. We have some batteries here to replace the batteries in the key fob. You're going to see when I press any button on the key fob, it's supposed to light up a red light. I can see that the batteries are dead. These are two CR2025 batteries that each key fob takes. So I got four. We're going to replace that. We have a new brake light that we got. Uh, we got it off of, uh, and uh, that's it. And we're also going to rotate the tires that this side has eight thirty seconds of tread. The other side has five thirty seconds. That's going to move the differential. It's not good. So we're going to make sure that the rear at least has equal size tires. Without further ado, let's get to it. First thing we're going to do, we're going to put back the door lock pins. And this is as simple as it gets. You just screw it, twist it, till you can't anymore, okay, and snug it. Don't need to put a lot of torque because these are fragile. Now let's go to the back door. On the back side here, something happened. The plastic part broke off and the metal stayed. So I got to unscrew what was left of the old pin, this uh, just aluminum piece. So this happens in your car, you know what to do. It's not a different pin. It just uh, broke off the plastic part and left the aluminum part back. All right, let's go to the other doors. Over here, same thing, and in with the newish pin. That's it. Last door, passenger door, same thing. On to the next fix. Now I'm going to replace this uh, right rear door ashtray that it's torn over here, it's got a small tear. And I got a new one at the junkyard. I think this was about six bucks. So I found a actually a pretty nice E500. And it's the same ashtray, the same color. Now, in order to remove this, there should be a couple of tabs here, but I think this is, this is broken. No, it's actually not. Well, you see, you got a couple of tabs that you have to pull down and uh, pull the ashtray back and it's both sides have this little tab i don't know if you can see i'll do my best here but you have to come with the pick and pull it down carefully well actually i don't need to be careful this one's coming out but you know, if you want to keep your ashtray anyway so i pulled the tabs pull the old ashtray out now we're going to go with a new ashtray in. Fit the bottom first and then press on the top. Now let's replace the battery on the key fob. Gorgeous wife did warn me that I would need a scissors. Now with the scissors. Now that we managed to unpack the batteries after a lot of difficulty, what you have to do, you have to get the key out of the fob and there's a slide here. So you slide it and you pull the key and you get it out. Then there's this white slide or button in here that you have to press. And as you press, you can see there is a seam here that separates a compartment with the battery from the rest of the fob. So I'm gonna press it and pull up on the seam and then we can separate the battery. As you can see, they both fell. So it has a marking here for the positive side. So you just put the positive side up for both batteries and like that. And we slide it back in to the fob and hopefully it's gonna work. Let's test. Yep. 
it's working. You can also see that now it blinks. So in this one, obviously, when I press, it doesn't blink. So the battery is also dead. We're going to replace. Same procedure. Okay, slide, positive side up. It's got the marking here for the positive, positive side up, and we slide it into the fob. All right, it's in. Let's test. Yep, it's working, and the red light is lighting. So that's it. On to the next. Now we're going to replace the sun visors. As you can see, this one's got a nasty stain. It's all hard. It's not working well. And I think that they pulled out the light here because they broke the mirror door. So they must have taken out the light here so it, it didn't drain the battery. So let's take this out. This is really simple. A couple of Phillips fasteners. And that's all there is to it. So this is actually a two-piece sun visor. I also have to remove the second piece over here. And I assume I just have to slide here back try to do it without breaking it yep slide it out like this and since the one that we're putting back is just one piece i'm just gonna put this back in place and come back with a new sun visor and with the new sun visor I'm just gonna put this in place first all right they're tight Look at that, much better, much better than the nasty stained visor. Let's check this uh, light here to see why it's not working. So it turned out that the light is working. We just turned on the car uh, and when you open the actual mirror, there's a button here that turns on the light. So everything working now. Now to the other sun visor, as you can see, oh, this is horrible. Uh, got one part out, old one out, new one goes in. Let's test it. So the light is working, but because the car has an electrical malfunction, it's got a problem with the voltage regulator. It's uh, turning off the electrical consumers I think that's what it's called and it doesn't let then the sun visor light turn on to uh, conserve battery but now that we turned the car on and it's charged the battery a little bit you can see that the lights turning on so on to the next fix to replace the wiper you have to turn on the key uh, and turn it off when the wiper is in a vertical position so you can lift it up and you just swing it and pull it and in this style of arm, of wiper arm, you can see that has this stop here, it's got this pin, you're going to have to replace, and I'm just going to put this down gently, you're going to have to replace uh, this bevel here, I'm not sure what this is called, with the one that comes. So in order to do that, because if I try to use this one over here, it's just going to be loose. It's not going to be the right fit. So in order to replace with the right one, which is this one, you just have to, in the front, you put your fingers here and you pull it. You're going to yank it. And then you'll come with the, with the new one and just slide it here and click. And that's how you do it. Now you can come here and it's going to be a very tight fit, as you can see. On the other side, you just repeat the same process. Now, I told you guys that windshield water is just not working. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see, it's disconnected. I'm going to reconnect. Let me try to reconnect this. Okay. It's reconnected again. Let's check the other side to see if it's connected. Yeah, this side, it seems to be connected over here. I don't think we have a problem. So let's test the windshield wiper now. Let's check. Yeah, now it's working. Yeah, now I got water and I've got new wipers. We got a missing clip. So let's replace that with Mercedes OEM clip. I don't know if you can see, but we got this at the junkyard and it's got Mercedes logo. 
and it was free. As you can see from the factory, this car does not come with an oil dipstick. So I bought a Dorman oil dipstick for the Mercedes 211, the 3.2 engine. And this is the dipstick. So we're gonna slide it in and it's a perfect fit. Now we have an oil dipstick and we can finally measure the oil level on the car because we're getting a message that it might be too high. And as you can see, it is kind of high. It's at the top, it's overfilled. Actually, look at that, it is overfilled. So the instrument cluster is actually correct when it's saying the oil is overfilled because it is, but we're gonna correct that when we replace the oil on the car. This is a situation with the tires. This is the right rear tire. And as you can see, I'm gonna measure the tread depth. It's about 930 seconds. So it's 930 seconds. And here, it's basically bald. It's 230 seconds versus 930 seconds. What this is gonna do, different tire sizes, you can, you can see that they are significantly, uh, this one is significantly higher than this one. You can see the difference. This is just mowing the differential. After I replace the tires, I'm gonna put new tires in. Just for the time being, I'm gonna put the bald one in the front, and this one's gonna go in the front too. I think the ones in the front have basically the same tread size. When we change the differential oil, we're gonna be able to see uh, the impact of you know, how long maybe this was going on. I don't think it was going on for too long, but uh, we're gonna check the oil for metal shavings. Let's see how it comes out. Now we got the tires, at least the right sized tires in the rear axle. So we got both sides with matching tread that should preserve the rear differential. And uh, that's it. If you like the video, please remember to subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming up in the W211. I think you're gonna find it very interesting. And uh, if you liked, also give it a like and help the channel. Thank you.